It's with great pleasure that I present our speaker this morning. She's truly the embodiment of peace and light and love and all that is good. I present to you our assistant minister, Reverend Anne Shand. Good morning, loved ones. Everything falling apart, but we are right here. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good on this beautiful morning as we celebrate the coming in of Christmas that we are all here together in consciousness, those with us in the sanctuary and those on cyberspace. This morning, my theme is titled Staying the Course. I begin my thoughts with part of an essay written by Howard Thurman, a minister, philosopher, who has been described as one of the greatest spiritual resources of North America. And I quote, Oh God, God our Father, hold us in the sweep of thy hands under the shadow of thy wing until at last all of our anguish dies and our fears removed and the joy of thy spirit possesses our lives. Thus we know for ourselves this day and tomorrow and tomorrow, not only that thou canst be trusted our father, but that life itself can be counted on. End of quote. We are held in the sweep of the hands of the Almighty until the joy of spirit possesses our lives and we come to the realization that the presence of God in us, as us, can be trusted and counted on to maintain and sustain our experiences in life's upward spiraling journey of spiritual unfoldment and growth. So during this time of the year, as we contemplate things of the spirit, we must remember that, that presence that can be counted on. In the Christian calendar, this time celebrated as Advent, which comes from the Latin root Adventus, which means a coming in, a time to recognize, appreciate, take a fresh new perspective on the importance of our coming into the deepening awareness of the consciousness of the Christ principle. Our declaration of principles states it so clearly, and I quote, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God, end of quote. We constantly work on our spiritual practices to come into the realization of our union with spirit. We believe in our own self as the individualization of that principle, of preaching as our own soul, our own spirit, and our own, and our own destiny. Always eternally experiencing the presence as we rise in consciousness. We are reminded in the Judah Christian Bible, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, end of quote. When we truly embody and become aware of the consciousness of God within, that's our divine sonship. It is out pictured in our life's unfoldment. We can count on the joy of spirit permeating the domains of our life experiences. Eric Butterworth, New Thought Luminary, shares this, and I quote, the Christ standard is not a restraint. It is an inherent potential. It is the law of man's higher self. It is the ascending urge within man that keeps him unsatisfied with what he is and does and drives him onto higher goals of living and being. True fulfillment is the goal toward which all men bend their efforts. 
and shape their struggles. And it can only be achieved through opening out a way whence the imprisoned splendor may escape, end of quote. Yes, that imprisoned splendor that flows on into our experience of lives, when our lives as we appreciate our growing awareness, our coming in of the presence of spirit in our lives. So, as we allow that presence to fill our minds, and as we truly come into our divine sonship, it allows us to bless, to prosper, to liberate, and to love. And we can trust the law of our being to demonstrate only good in our lives. So how are we directing our attention? Does our actions assist us forward in fulfilling our life's purpose? Are they meaningful, of real value? Are our actions deliberate and consistent with our unfolding evolution as spirit idea for the best of our lives? Are we staying the course in the face of challenges that have arisen? Are we demonstrating limitless living? Are we demonstrating life more abundant? Hmm. All questions. But friends, everything is significant in the unfolding of our life's purpose and the attainment of spiritual maturity. Yes, we celebrate our successes fine. We are at one with spirit and everything is working out. But when things get uncomfortable, despair may set in. Do we acknowledge it with a view to turning the other cheek? Which is to look away to the desirable state of being. Staying the course of transformation is not the easiest thing to accomplish. So let us look at the beginning of Luke for answers. I speak specifically of the example of Zacharias and Elizabeth the parents of John the Baptist. Elizabeth was also the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It starts in chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. I will summarize the story, but I'll read the verses we should pay particular attention to. Zacharias was a priest, and his wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron, Moses' brother. Verse 6 reads, and I quote, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Seven, and they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were now well stricken in years, end of quote. This couple followed the law of the Lord, devoted they were to prayer, and, but they were past childbearing years, but continued to pray for a child. In those days, having no children was considered a curse. As a result, was to pay for some sin committed. So let us look at that bit of information. Some of us can relate to the fact that during this year, we may have had seeming unanswered prayers or demonstrations. And the, possibly the thought may have crossed our mind that this is the result of some past misdeed, or we did not stay the course of diligent prayer, or kept the right mental pattern to facilitate the demonstration. Or we may have fallen off the spiritual path somewhere, and there's a, feelness, a feeling of numbness or dryness. So listen. Let us get back to the story. While Zacharias was in the temple, burning incense. Metaphysically, burning incense is a delicate secret process that goes on in the body, a process of transmutation, a change, a refinement of consciousness, a process usually done by priests because it required spiritual understanding, a process that takes place in us as we offer a firm within our prayers or unity and common union with spirit. Transmutation is a change in form, nature, or substance. So transmutation takes place 
in us as a result of this consistent practicing of the presence through our spiritual practices. It creates a new mental paradigm that outpictures as a demonstration of good desired. So that is what burning incense means, metaphysically. The psalmist amplifies this with, let your prayers be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as a living sacrifice. I think that, that's from Psalm 141. In other words, our prayers are likened to incense. They are the channels through which the change of consciousness represents a new mold for the desired good. And evening sacrifice is as we let go of the old way of doing things to embrace the new way of being. This reminds me of forgiveness, giving up what does not serve us to embrace what it is that we desire. The story goes on with the appearance of Gabriel, who told Zacharias of his answered prayer. And I quote, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Verse 14, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. But at verse 18, Doubt in the demonstration was displayed by Zacharias. And I quote from him, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, my wife stricken in years. The result of that was Zacharias was told that he would remain dumb until manifestation came forth. And that was a result of his unbelief. He didn't believe him. Anyway, Metaphysically, Zacharias represents spiritual consciousness and Elizabeth love consciousness. Together, they represent the whole expression of what the sum total of what we believe in. Thought and feeling expressing on the spiritual plane. Elizabeth Santerna describes this, hence they were receptive to a divine idea, which was the appearance of Gabriel. However, it's like us sometimes. We are often awed by the revelation of spirit through the strong emergence of a desire in the forefront of our conscious mind. Sometimes we find it difficult to accept that we are the chosen channel through which the demonstration will be made manifest in our physical experience. We question ourselves, maybe that's too big for God. Really, me? No, sir, me can't do it. Does that ring a bell anywhere? So too was Zacharias, fearful and doubting. So he was struck down. The implication of this is that this disbelief keeps us from speaking the word. That word of thanksgiving for the desired good. I mean, really believe it and give thanks and say, yes, this is my good. I put my stamp of individuality on it. So let us go back through the answered prayer for Zacharias. In the sanctuary of his inner being, he silently prayed consistently for the advent of an heir. His desired good, affirmed in prayer, diligent and receptive, in the secret place of the Most High within, was seamless. That prayer was deeply embedded, pure in its essence. It was a union of thought and feeling that feeling is a result of Elizabeth's love consciousness. It tells us that once the feeling is pure in its intention, something happens. In fact, Elizabeth literally loved her demonstration into manifestation. I go on to verses 24 and 25. And after those days, his wife conceived and hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord dealt with me in the days therein. He looked on me to take away my reproach among men. End of quote. Her evidence of the pregnancy was there for everybody to see. So after the five months, she went out for everybody to see. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Anyway, 
Dr. Holmes made a statement that indicates the state of being necessary for demonstration. And I quote, if statements are real to the one who makes them, if he has a deep inward conviction and feeling, his statements have power, end of quote. So as we continue to stay the course of persistent prayer, this coming in of our heightened sense of the awareness of the Christ consciousness must herald the news of physical manifestation. For Zacharias, when he was able to communicate that name of his newborn son, he wrote it down at the naming ceremony. His name is John. His tongue was loosened, and he was able to praise God. Verse 68, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. End of quote. This presence, friends, can be trusted, counted on to support us and sustain us with its beneficence. Zacharias was now able to prophesy the coming of the Christ. Verse 69, and he hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That's the Christ consciousness. So friends, for your homework, which I don't normally give, Please read Luke 1. <laughs> and verse 79 says, To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. End of quote. This verse captures the reason why staying the course is important to the maintenance of our spiritual foundation. If we are to become complete and be blessed, our experience, our completion and fulfillment. By living in the Christ consciousness, we must develop a spiritual mindset, a mindset that will require both aspects of our being, our thought and fully focused emotions to ultimately achieve our true reality. We are individualizations of the God presence. We have to balance our spiritual possibilities with living in the world of material sense and still gain the level of consciousness that represents God in us, as us, in every sense of the truth of our being. We must come to trust the process and count on our evolution to achieve spiritual mastery. We are spiritual beings humanly unfolding into our true divinity. I repeat 79 again, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. This means staying the course as we deepen our immersion in the Christ consciousness, which is a light of truth that guides us unerringly to experience spirit's highest idea of our infinite potential within, to heal our sense of separation from good, to realize always that the eternal perfect life of God is ours to experience. We are reminded, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And let us always walk into paths of peace and pleasantness. This truth can be trusted and counted on. We're not doing anything by ourselves, so there is nothing to fear or doubt of myself. I do, I do nothing. It is, it is a battle within that, that do will work, work. Something, something that holds our, our hands always. always. So, let so let us trust the promise of the joy of spirit as our natural state of being. As we continue to be diligent and steadfast with our spiritual practices and in the high point of realization that takes place as the seed of the desired good is planted in the fertile soil of mind, we can sense the union with our demonstration. In that feeling of fulfillment, we know and trust that every resource for its physical manifestation is present within the idea. This union ushers in the presence of spirit, which moves upon itself by becoming the desired good, and the fully orbed desire emerges in our physical space. This sacred promise happens every time within the process of demonstration. So remember, thought, 
backed by fully focused emotions, are the foundation or nucleus for the development of increased good in our lives. Universal law always works. Sometimes in the midst of doubt and fear and anxiety, the universe provides cues of an affirmation and encouragement and hope, a certainty, a sense of conviction that spring forth naturally from our consciousness. Sometimes it's fleeting, you know, but you know, something brought it to your attention. Sometimes, sometimes it's an affirming lyrics of a song. It's a sunset, something that just lets you know that you're on track. Sometimes it's a word of encouragement from a friend, as if they were reading our minds, something we needed to hear at the right time. Inspiration, that we are on the right path as we have chosen an idea for our highest good. So in this special time, let us look at probably an idea that we have held in our hearts secretly that we wish to experience. An idea that we can devote our love and attention to. Taking the time to do whatever is necessary for its fulfillment. Secondly, let us fill our minds with love, with wonder, visualizing the joy of accomplishment, that bubbly, contagious joy that says yes to the acceptance of this good in our lives. Thirdly, every day and last thing at night, let us see ourselves sharing and serving others in the spirit of happiness and joy as we celebrate every step of our accomplishment, giving thanks for every milestone and we can sense that anticipation of desired good. And let us praise the presence of spirit as we unfold into the achievement of our highest expression of an abundant life. Finally, remember Lamentations 3, 21 to 24. I feel you with Bible this morning. And I quote, This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. End of quote. So we can trust and count on the law of the Lord because great is its faithfulness. Yes, our prayers will open the way to rise transcendent over all challenges until we become fully aware of the consciousness of the Christ within that is our divine sonship. It is who we are. It is the coming in of our true reality. So this morning, I affirm for every individual on the face of this plane of existence, the continuing beneficence of love, peace, and goodwill to all. Namaste. <laughs> And our beloved Steve has sent us a gift this morning.
We thank Stevie. And remember, when you're enjoying the goodwill and the cheer this year, just remember that divine sunshine that is drawing into your lives all the love, all the peace, and then all the joy.